Okay, this is 11.7 corrections. Are the two figures similar? If so, give the scale factor of the first figure to the second figure. And able to determine this, I've got to line up corresponding measurements. So on this first one, I've got 10 to 4. Well, 10 and 15 are on top. Okay, and remember, in this other one, I got my side measures of 4, my height 6. These should be similar. I'm wondering, are they? Okay, so 10 to 4 reduces the 5 to 2. This also reduces 5 to 2. So the scale factor is the same. Therefore, the two, the two figures are similar. Okay, this one, I've got 3 to 5. Now, all cubes are similar to all cubes. Okay, I don't even have that, and I, I can even show that all the dimensions are the same. But all cubes are similar to all cubes, and all the dimensions are the same, and they will be equal. So scale factor is the same. Remember, scale factor is the same as perimeter ratio, and therefore two figures are similar. similar. Okay, now... When I'm doing this next one, remember, I've got diameter to diameter. I could totally go diameter to diameter, radius to radius. It really doesn't matter. Uh, so let's go diameter to diameter. That's 4 to 10. And height to height, 6 to 9. Are they similar? I'm wondering, are they? This reduces to 2 uh, thirds. This reduces to 2 fifths. So are the two ratios the same? No. Figures not similar. Similar. Okay, same idea in four, uh, height to height, radius to radius here. So I've got height of the big and radius of the small of the big, and I'm going to compare that to the height of the small and radius of the small. Okay, and I've got this is dividing by two. I've got four to three, and dividing by two here, I've got three to one. Okay. Well, gosh, those are not the same, so they are not similar. Okay, uh, two cubes, one with five-inch edges and the other with six-inch edges, and like I said, yes, because all cubes are similar. And remember, cubes meaning that all the sides are the same measure. So consequently, the scale factor will always be the same. A cylinder, cylinder and a cone. Well, part of this similarity thing is the shapes have to be the same shape. Shapes are different. And if you're not sure, cone, cylinder, okay, so not similar. seven, eight, nine. So here's the deal. Each pair of figures is similar. Use the given information to find the scale factor of the smaller figure to the larger figure. So now I don't have to determine if they're similar or not. I can just use the scale factor. And part of that is I got to get that scale factor. Okay. I can use the scale factor and everything else. And remember, I've got scale factors for um, length, width, and uh, uh, area, and volume. In this case, they give me volume. So the volume from one to the other is 125 pi, 64 pi. And pi's cancel, they become one. And remember, I have volume right now. I need to get to, I need to take the cubic root to get to my scale factor, which is four to five. Now, they have uh, used the given information to find the scale factor of the smaller figure to the larger figure. Well, I've got it. This is the scale factor of smaller to larger to larger. Remember, smaller would have to be on top. Same idea in this next one. I got the smaller 125, larger 216. Cubic roots 
cubic root. Now I let these go without reducing because I know these are perfect cubes uh, from my experience with working with them. You guys will have to like um, get used to seeing those, but we're really looking at when I put this in my calculator, five to six, and this is my scale factor. Okay, and according to what they wanted me to do, is small two, and I'm not sure why I put an E on small over here. Too large, but this is small, too large. And notice I'm putting it in different ways that you've seen it. Now on this next one, we're actually given surface area. Surface area is a two dimensional thing. So I got 150 to 294. Well, I'm gonna put this in my calculator reduce because I don't know those are perfect squares. So I second quit, excuse me, second quit, second quit. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, 150 divided by 294. Okay, I'm gonna make it a fraction and it returns 2549. Now this is the same 2549. Okay, now keep in mind what I've just done is I've reduced my area and I still have this is still an area ratio. Now they want me to have a scale factor. Scale factor the square root of 25, the square root of 49, because I go from area, which is two dimensions, that's why I'm taking the square root to get one dimension scale factor of small to big. Same idea is going on in the 10. I got 36 pi to 121 pi. Pi's are gonna knock each other out. And now I take the square root and I've got six to 11 scale factor. Now I'm gonna be using those scale factors on future problems, but I'm hoping that you understand how to get them. The volumes of two similar figures are given. The surface area of the smaller figure is given. Okay, find the surface area of the larger figure. Well, if I know the volume and the, my volume Remember, I've got to get my scale factor, and I'm doing cube because I got volume scale uh, uh, ratio provided. This is two to three. That's my scale factor. It's what we just did in the last four. Now I'm going to use that scale factor, and I'm going to find surface area. Surface area is squared, so this is squared equal 36. Now find the surface area of the larger figure. 36 is smaller. I'm finding x, so it's 4x is equal to nine times 36. And I'm gonna divide by four and X is 81. So 81 um, meters squared is my surface area. And maybe, so surface area is 81 meters squared of larger figure. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing in six. I got a volume, great. So I've gotta take my volume, which is 125, find the cubic root, and 216, find the cubic root. This is five to six. If you notice this is one that we just did on the previous four. Now, I'm supposed to find surface area with this. So five squared to six squared, and this is my smaller, because I'm looking for the larger. Okay, so this is opposite the five, and I'm looking for this. So now I've got 25, x is equal to 36 times 200. Now 25 goes into 200 eight times, so I got 36 times eight, and I pop that in my calculator, and I get uh, 288 for my surface area, 288 inches squared for my larger figure. Same thing in my last one. Now, here I've got three to 375. This reduces to one over 125. One, 125 is a perfect cube, so cube, 125, cube. This is one to five, that's my scale factor. Now, I'm working with surface area, so I gotta square them and say, hey, that's four, two X. Well, X is equal to uh, 25 times four, which is 100 feet squared. So that's the surface area of my larger figure. So I hope if you notice the theme on all of those when we're doing them, I'm gonna group them all together. 
we're going to get them shrinky dinked and we're going to put them over so that way I can have room in the other ones. A cylindrical thermos has a radius of two inches and three, a uh, five inch high, and it's five inches high. It holds 10 fluid ounces. To the nearest ounce, how many ounces with a similar thermos with a radius of three? Well, the ratio I'm working with is two to three, okay? And I'm thinking about volume because it's fluid ounces. So I'm gonna cube these, okay? So this is going to be 8 to 27. So I've got a, a setup of 8 to 27, and 8's the small, so 10 fluid ounces to how many fluid ounces? 8x is equal to 270, and I divide 270 by 8, and I get 33.75. But if I read the problem, they say to the nearest ounce. So my nearest ounce, it will, uh, the larger thermos, will hold 34 ounces. <clears throat> now remember, I'm going through, and these are things I've practiced, I've done before, I'm comfortable doing. If you haven't done them before, they're kind of a challenge, so make sure you're comfortable with making the changes that we're making. I'm just gonna group this one together too so we can see what's going on in our next problem. So now our next one, two similar pyramids have height six and nine. What's their scale factor? Well, heights and six to nine, these are the same measurements. So six to nine, remember their heights, so my scale factor reduced is two to three. So a scale factor is two to three. What's the ratio of their surface area? Surface area is squared, that should be four to nine. And the volumes should be eight to 27. Now, when we're looking at these last ones, a small spherical hamster ball has a diameter of eight and a volume of about 268. A larger ball has a diameter of 14. Estimate the volume of the larger hamster ball. Well, I'm gonna get a new ball for hammy. Okay, so I'm looking at this ratio of eight to 14. Okay, those are a linear relationship. My scale factor becomes as a reduced four to seven. Now, I'm looking at volume. So four third, four cubed to seven cubed is gonna be equal to, remember the smaller is 268, the larger is X. So now I got uh, four to the third power is 64 X equals seven thirds, okay, times 268. Remember, I'm gonna take this and divide this whole thing, seven thirds, 268 by 64. Now I'm gonna get my calculator out here so you can see me put those in. I've got seven raised to the third power, okay, times 268 divided by 64. And that's 1436.3. So I got 1436.3125. And then you say, what's the volume of the smaller cylinder? Oh, no, excuse me. What's estimate the volume of hammies? Well, hammies ball will be about 1,436.3 inches cubed. That's my estimate, okay, for hammies new uh, exercise ball, okay? He's probably going to uh, try out for the next Bolt movie, right? Okay, so now... We got that done. The lateral area of two similar cylinders, the lateral area, that's squared. Two similar cylinders are 64 and 144. Remember, those are perfect squares. Okay, I'm gonna find their square root. That's eight to 12. Now, that's eight to 12, they reduce um, two to three. So that is my um, linear relationship, they're saying, hey, what's the volume? Well, the volume relationship is to the third power. And then they, the volume of the larger cylinder, that should be opposite this three, 216, looking for um, the smaller cylinder volume. So this is 27, three cubed, x is equal to eight times 216, and x is equal to eight times 216 divided by 27. So I'm getting this done on my uh, lateral areas for my similar cylinders, I take my lateral area to um, get my ratio, and now I've got eight 
times 216 divided by 27, and that equals 64. 8, 2, 16 divided by 27, I get myself a 64, and I'm looking at the what's the volume of the smaller cylinder, and the smaller cylinder is 64 meters squared, or meters cubed, okay? What have us? Now, my last one. The volumes of two similar prisms is 135 and 5,000. 135, 135, and 5,000. Now, those are cubed. That's volume. Find the ratio of their heights. The ratio of their heights is the same as the ratio of their scale factor. And remember, if I do this, cubed, cubed, and the first thing I got to do, though, before I even do that, let's back that up. I'm going to go 135 divided by 5,000. Okay, 5,000. And then go second math. Nope, excuse me, just math. And I go frac and hit enter. And 27, 1,000. So we're going to back this up a bit. We're going to reduce these first. This is equal to 27, 1,000. That makes my life easier, even if I was doing it this way. Okay, but... We're going to do it this way. We'll leave it like that. That's the same. And then I go 3 to 10. So the ratio of their heights, this is my A answer. And the ratio of the area in my B answer is 9 to 100. And we are done. Hopefully things went well. If you got questions, make sure you ask. But this is a video that you're watching. Have yourself a great day.